Hi, this is a small tutorial on how to run Cadence. So primarily I've logged into a Linux machine or a server which has Cadence on it. So in order to start Cadence, I would right click, say open in terminal. So by doing this, you get a terminal window. Unix terminal window. So I type the following command to start cadence. So it is source start CDS. Say we will use 13E100. So that brings up the cadence window. And uh, basically, uh, we see here. This window is the log file for Cadence. So it says that the license is checked out and you're good to go for usage. And the one window behind is the library manager, which we use often, or it just consists of all the libraries you need to do for your project or your design. So for example, we would uh, see if you want any discrete elements. So here's the GPDK90 library, which has a bunch of cells or devices which you can use. So there's a neat button called show categories. So if I check that, it's going to list everything as categories. So I have bipolar, diodes, MOSFETs, passive elements like resistors, etc. So it's easy in finding things right here. So in order to start off with our design, so let's create a new library. So I'd go to File, New, Library. So this brings up a window where you can give a name, say, Tutorial Cadence. And say OK. The moment you do that, you have another window. It says technology file. So we have a bunch of options here. So I would say attach to an existing technology library. So and just say OK. So this brings up another window which says what library needs to be attached as a template. So I would choose the 90 nanometer library for this design. So I just say OK. And there you have it. Nothing seems to come up, but to verify what you have done, you could see I have created a library which is reflecting as tutorial cadence. So I click there. There's nothing in it. It's just a library. So in this, we could add cells like schematics or layouts, etc., to fill up. So basically, if I have to do a new schematic. So I'm going to take a schematic of an inverter. So just say file, new, cell view. That opens another screen here. So I type, say, the name. So say inverter underscore tutorial. Right? And make sure your view is in schematic. And your type is in schematic. So in this pull down, you have a bunch of other options which you could do. But now we are interested in a schematic. So this would be by default a schematic. And the application in which it opens is the schematic L. So you have schematic XL, some schematic L. So this is the default application the cadence runs. So if I click OK, you would get another window which says schematic editor. So I could build my schematic in this for our case. So we're taking an inverter example here. So I would have to quickly look through this. You, one can observe you have a bunch of quick menu here, options like cre uh, having wires or creating instances or deleting stuff, right? And I have a cool menu bar here, right? So I would like to create an instance. So I would go to create instance. So or you could use the bind key I as a shortcut to create an instance. So I click on instance, I would get 
another window here, which basically asks for a library in a cell. So I will click on Browse, which again pops up your library browser, right? And here you would choose our PDK kit, which is the 19 nanometers. So since I have highlighted this, you have a bunch of categorized view here, so I would go for MOS. So in order to build our inverter, we have our NMOS and the PMOS. So I would, there are different voltage levels for each. So I would choose the one volt NMOS and make sure you have a symbol. So once you click on the symbol, you could, there's a tiny window which shows you the symbol of the NMOS transistor. And here you would again get another add instance window. So which gives you basically parameters for this transistor. So like, you know, I could set the length the width, finger width, or a number of fingers you need for the transistors. So there are a bunch of other options here too, but uh, the most basic ones are right here. So you could edit them now. Say I would want two fingers of finger width 120, so my total width of this is 240 nanometers. So you could do this once, or you could edit this again so once you're done with this uh, I would say you can say hide and you can see that you can see the symbol here so I could place it anywhere I want so just clicking on that will place the element if you want to click uh, if you want the same transistor again you can click again or hitting the escape key will exit that command and as one can notice uh, the commands are reflected here. So this is what Cadence runs as a background to do that command. So now I've got my NMOS. I'm going to search for my PMOS. So this time I'm going to use my bind key I. So when I press I, I get my add instance here. So I could choose my library, my cell. So I just need a PMOS. So you can type PMOS here directly. But I would just go through the library, so it's a browse. So there's a PMOS one volt device here, so if I click on that, you could see the PMOS, and make sure the symbol is highlighted. If you forget this, you can still type symbol here to get that. So again, I could set, say, my fingers as four, as an example here, so using my parameters. So note that I have minimum length transistors here, so you say hide. And I could just place them right there. So escape. So I've got my basic elements for the inverter, but they're not connected. So to connect them, you could use, you need to use wires, which is here. So you can use the, create an arrow wire, or you could create a bus. But uh, in this case, a narrow wire would do. Or you could go to create wire, narrow, which says you can use the bind key W as a shortcut key. So I would click on wire right now. So that brings up the goal. So you single click on the node, drag your mouse, and then another single click that, that finishes your wire, right? So I'm just I'm going to do an escape and show you with the bind key. So I press W, I get another wire. So I'm going to join the gates together. So make sure you tie the substrate connections. So I would connect my PMOS substrate to VDD and the NMOS substrate to ground. Right, so basically you're not done yet. And this is where I take the output. Now, uh, this circuit is still incomplete, so I would rather add pins to this schematic and make a hierarchical view. So I would go to adding a pin. So you can add a pin by either using a create pin, or you could go to create pin, or you can use the bind key P. So I would create a pin. So that brings up another cool window here. So I could give the pin name. And it says what type of pin is it? Is it an input, output, bidirectional, switch, etc.? So I'd use this as an input, and I'd give this a name. So input. 
So pressing enter, you, you can get a nice pin just floating. So I just click on the node, so that's becoming my input pin. So note that as you do your schematic, you have a bunch of instances here, which gives you a list of what wires are there, etc. What are the nets and the pins? So this is a good useful way to see how many nets are there in your circuit. So now I would similarly use the output. So I'm going to use the bind key P. So press P, I get this. And I'm going to do an output right now. And then say out. And just say hide. There are a bunch of other stuff, you know, like you, you want to rotate this. So pressing R would rotate your pin, right? Or you could use this command here so to rotate right, left, or flip the component if you want to. So I would leave it like this. So here's my output pin. So it's nearly taking shape. Now I'm going to have to connect the VDD and the VSS. So I would again go to pin. This time select IO or input output to VDD VSS. So by using a space, you can add multiple pins. So the pins get added in the sequence at which you add. So if I say, hi, I'm going to get the VDD pin first, followed by the VSS pin first. So this helps people to add pins in one shot. So that's a good way of doing it, or rather less cumbersome. So I would say hide. Now I get another pin. I just place them. There's my VDD, there's my VSS escape and it's pretty good good to go so the schematic of the inverter is ready so now you could do a so to do a test bench you need a solve view out of this so or a symbol so what you can do is you can go to create solve view from solve view sorry i'm sorry about that uh solve view from solve view so clicking this, you get another window here. So it's asking what's the cell name, which is our inverter tutorial, followed by now you could see the view name has become a symbol and the type has become a schematic symbol. So basically you're creating a hierarchical symbol out of this. So the design is inside. So you could use this outside on a test bench. So you could say, okay, that gives you another window. It says how the pin orientation is. So my input pin is on my left. That's okay. The output pin is on the right, which is good. So I don't need, so I typically convention if I follow, I would use the VSS pin. So I just copy this or cut it using control X and then paste it. You'd get a bottom pin. That's really good. Say okay. That pops up another window, so here's your symbol. So typically you don't need, if it's good to go with a box, it's good, or you could use the tools here to create new shapes you want, like an inverter or anything, so this is good to go. So before you do everything, uh, make sure you check and save your design, right? So else cadence doesn't register that. So you just close this, this is not gonna get, this is gonna disappear. So let's check and save our design. So here's check and save. Note, I didn't get any errors. So my circuit is okay. Uh, I'm just uh, gonna do a quick demonstration of another. So let me say, I'm gonna disconnect this. Right. Now when I say check and save it's going to pop up some warnings here saying some unconnected nets and uh, if you can see here you could sorry sorry let's close it and you could just see you can zoom the design here so you can see zoom in or use the arrow keys to pan so you could see there are blinking markers here that are placed it's because of the error. If or you're you don't know what the error is, you could still check in the log. Here, go to virtuoso, and here it would say, pin B is floating. 
on this Pima, so it's this IO pin is floating, so that's that is the error that's gonna get popped up. So I rejoin this and then check and save. Not that the markers disappeared and my design is clean. So once you're done with your symbol, you could check and save your symbol too. And say just close these, minimize this. Now in your library you created, you have a new cell here, which is the inverter tutorial and you could have the different views in the cell so you have the schematic view which appears here and your symbol which can be appeared here so this is how you create a symbol in a schematic in cadence thank you for watching